And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Legendary Ant-Man. This is an expansion for the Upper Deck Marvel deck building game. Uh, legendary set and this is about Ant-Man and since there was an Ant-Man and Wasp movie last year, that's why they made this of course. Of course they can't just use those two people and you would think they would use like the ghost character from the movie, not in this set. So what is in a set? Well, Ant-Man and Wasp and then Ant-Man who is Dr. Pym a lot of times, most arch enemy that exists, Ultron is in the set, but what else? Well, they picked a couple of Avengers who we haven't seen yet in the movies at all, and you may never have heard of them if you're kind of a movie person, but these were big characters in the Marvel Universe, not so much recently, but in times past. But whatever, I'm rambling here because I'm a Marvel nerd. Let's take a look at what's in the set. I'm assuming you already know how to play the game. There are five new heroes in this set, so one of them here is the Wasp, and the Wasp has size changing here. Size changing is not a new thing to this set, it's been in at least two other sets. Size changing basically means if you have one of that symbol, the card will cost two less. But Wasp also has microscopic size changing, so there's a couple interesting things about this. First of all, you can use them multiple times, up to the number of times in the card. So this card costs nine, but I can play one, two, three, four, five to reduce it by two for each of those cards that I've played this turn. In fact, it can even be negative one if I played all five of them, which would give me that one extra money to spend on something else, which is kind of a cool thing. The card itself, if she has double Avengers helping her, it's four plus one for each other card you played this turn, which is extremely powerful. Like this card a lot. And this one's just a straight up, you know, one, possibly three attack, but it has the microscopic size changing. Ant-Man himself, another hero in the set, also comes with size changing here. And this one gives you an extra attack for each card you drew this turn. And Ant-Man also has the microscopic size changing uh, cards. So these here, uh, this one here lets you discard a card to draw a card, but this one here lets you give size changing to someone else. It will make future cards cheaper to buy, not to mention it's a straight up five attack. Also, it's one of my favorite things that happens in the comic slash movies, the Pym Particles. Wonder Man, an energy-based guy who often in the comics is a pacifist, which is, you know, unhelpful to the hero sometimes because he's so powerful. But he has something here called Empowered. And what Empowered means is when you play this card, you're going to look at the symbols on the characters in the headquarters, and for every symbol that matches this, he's plus one. So this card, for example, really useful card. Draw a card or Empowered by Strength, which could be, you know, one, two, three, or whatever. So that's a pretty handy card. This one here you get empowered by science and you get to put a card from the headquarters on the bottom of the hero deck. So you kind of are cycling through and hoping to get more of these cards out. Uh, here you put a hero on the headquarters on the bottom of the deck and it's either going to be money or attack. And then here, hey, Wonder Man also comes with size changing which makes this one possibly a six. Put any number of headquarter cards on the bottom of the deck and then he's empowered by two different symbols. Which if you built the, your heroes right could be extremely cool. Jocasta is the final hero in this set here. The Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, the second last hero. I have one more to talk about. She also has size changing and empowered, which is cool. Uh, here, if the discard pile is empty, she gets plus two money. Otherwise, shuffle your discard pile in your deck. She has two cards. This one also lets her shuffle the discard pile into the deck. Interesting character in the comics. Uh, kind of an okay character for me in this particular game. And then finally, we have the Black Knight character here who's empowered by the color of your choice. That's super neat. I, I really like that card, especially considering how cheap it is. And then he also gets extra cards whenever a Master Strike is played. And then finally, the awesome Ebony Blade card, where you get power equal to a printed p attack of a villain in your victory pile. Unfortunately, it doesn't include Mastermind Tactics, but who cares? Kill a couple enemies, and you probably will by the time you can afford this. And this card becomes really powerful as time goes by. So it's not just good guys that are in this set, though. We also have some bad guys. We have some, here's some of the villains, Ultron's Legacy. So this set, one of the things that they did that I like is pretty much every villain is a different card. You'll notice that many of these are empowered, 
by different symbols that are out on the table, which makes them more powerful. This person's a four, but uh, could be empowered by that symbol. This one's a three, empowered by the science symbols. So you can actually maybe even manipulate this to make these people easier to hurt by buying a card from the middle. So the, these are empowered. This future Ultron Prime is double empowered, which means it's two for each one. And then this one here is microscopic size changing, which makes it easier to defeat if you have sp certain symbols, which is pretty neat too. Then Queen's Vengeance, these people, here's some more microscopic size changing. You know, they're working with the size changing on the different people here. And Daystar and Gigantis and Iron Knight and Yeoman America. You'll notice that both of these have chivalrous duel which means when you fight them, you can only use character cards from one person. So I might, for example, have a couple Black Knight cards in my hand, as well as a Jocasta card, but I can only use one. So I could only use Black Knight against them. So they're not that powerful. Well, the, uh, some, some of them are powerful, but when you can only use one type of hero to fight them, that makes them a much bigger pain in the neck. And that's even doubly so when you play against Mastermind Morgana La Fay. And this is the epic version of her. This is the, the more mild version. A seven doesn't seem too powerful, but when it's chivalrous duel, which means you can only use one person at a time, that is kind of a pain in the neck. The other villain in this set is Ultron himself. And what he does is when his master strike happens, everyone reveals a tech hero or they put a non-gray hero from the discard pile into a threat analysis next to Ultron. And he's empowered by every color in his threat analysis power. So the more that, the more, every time this happens, there's more colors in there, and so he could become extremely powerful. And if you play with the epic side, he's triple empowered. That's insane. I don't know why anyone would want to play with that. So there's these cards. There's also then a few more uh, different plots that are in the game. We have the Age of Ultron, which is obviously one of the more popular plots here. Very difficult. It has kind of that whole evolved Ultron type thing, even if Ultron's not in the game. This one I don't think really works thematically unless you're playing with Ultron as the bad guy. Pull Earth in the Medieval Times. Here you have Chivalrous Duel all over the place, which can be kind of a pain in the neck. Transform Commuters into Giant Ants. This one's actually a little easier to play than uh, some of the other ones. This is like a very basic one where some bystanders come out and be ants and you have to fight them and then you rescue the bystanders. So this is kind of a basic one, which is nice. And then trap heroes in the microverse. And here everyone is micro-sized villains and size changing. So basically these four things, except for the ants, that's more thematic than anything else, just use the different uh, powers that are introduced in this set. This is a small set for legendary, five heroes, two villain packs, and two masterminds. It does bring, like I said, Ultron, who's like one of the biggest, baddest villains in the Marvel Universe. Morgana Le Fay, she's a big bad one, actually, but a lot of people haven't heard of her. So they're, you know, two pretty solid masterminds. The heroes themselves, I always thought Wonder Man was kind of a stupid hero, um, but hey, he's here in Jocasta. She's newer. Kind of like a robot that Ultron created. Now, she's in the comics more often than not. She's currently like fighting for robots' rights. Um, so there, that's a storyline. But Ant-Man and Wasp is the main focus of this, and then the microscopic size changing. I think that's cool, but the Empower thing is really cool. I would love to see way more of that in this. And in fact, because of that, even though Wonder Man is not one of my favorite characters, He's one of my favorite characters to use in this game because of how the empowered thing works. So a lot of cool things in here. Um, it's not that difficult. So if you've just got one of the base sets and you want to add these in, it's pretty easy. And a lot of people will know who the characters are. Well, not the villains. A lot of these villains are one shot, showed up every once in a while type villains. So whatever, you're just going to smack them around anyway. But pretty cool set. That's Legendary Ant-Man. I like it. Dice Tower Judgment approved.